For Creamer Media's Policy, I'm Sashni Nimadli. Researcher and analyst, Professor Raymond Sutner, joins me for Sutner's View, a weekly commentary on South Africa's political scene. Welcome, Professor. Thank you. In some of your articles where you have questioned the ANC's performance, you have also raised doubts about the DAs. Why is that? Yeah, you know, I think we spend a lot of time now uh, remarking on the corruption and inefficiency and so forth of the ANC. And there's an assumption that the DA equals regularity, efficiency, and uh, delivery on a basis that is has got integrity and all of that. And I think it's important that we should ac look more closely. The ANC uses this phrase, uh, ready to govern in 1990, uh, speaking about themselves. And I think we've got to ask ourselves, with the potentiality of the ANC not having a majority, what does it mean if the AN DA becomes the leading force in that government? And I would raise two questions about them. Well, the first one relates to racism, and the second one relates to foreign policy. Um, with regard to race, I think we've got to ask ourselves whether the DA has positioned itself adequately in order to displace the ANC in relation to a constituency which is uh, the majority of the population, Africans in particular, black people in general. And the record of the DA seems to me to indicate that it still is not able to uh, rid itself of the image of being a white party, but also a party that is soft on racism. Um, it seems to be regarded by many racists as a home. And almost every week, some Facebook posting, Twitter posting, or other utterance happens, and in a significant number of the cases, the people turn out to be DA people. And it's not to, it's to me something that should trouble the DA. They now have an African as the leader, but you've had members of the DA, black members of the DA, especially Africans, complaining that the party is run by a white, minor, white group of people. And we have the situation, in my view, we also have insensitivity, which to me tells one something with a lack of familiarity with the way in which black people read some things. Twice in Parliament, you've had a situation where um, one, on one occasion, uh, Steenhuizen, the chief whip, said that the chair of the sitting was talking nonsense or talking rubbish. Now, in the context of South African racism, another case was mania referring to someone as being stupid. Now, in the context of South African racism, the discourse uh, associated with racism was to refer to Africans as being stupid. The dom kafir. A kafir is a kafir, is, and meaning you can't entrust that person, African in particular, but maybe black people more generally, have not got the same qualities uh, of intelligence that white people have. Uh, if you say someone is talking nonsense, in other words, you say, or rubbish, you're saying that it is not possible to analyze that rationally. It falls outside the bounds of rationality. And they don't seem to realize that that, and calling someone stupid, rings bells of racism coming from a white person. And I know about these things because I have interacted 
over a long time with Africans. Now, it seems to me to indicate that they haven't. What I find more troubling is when someone objected to mania referring to someone as being stupid, as being racist, Pumzile van Dam said it's got nothing to do with racism, man is stupid or something like that. In other words, the purveyors of racism need not be white. You can have collusion of black people in this. So that's my one problem with the DA is that uh, on the one level, they're not sufficiently sensitive to the discourse that they use, and they need to look at this. If they hope to be regarded as a party, they must understand that the ANC was entrusted by people who loved them. They were regarded as a party that was compassionate towards the majority of the population. Now. If you're insensitive, you can't possibly be that. Now, the idea that the DA is efficient is something that I observed recently when I was in Cape Town and most the robots, most robots were working, I didn't see potholes, all of these things. But the other side of the coin is that this is uneven. Where I was driving was mainly in wealthier areas. Um, in the poorer colored and African areas, you still have these problems that replicate what you find up here. You also have a situation where um, the DA um, in some places like Swellendam is um, operating very efficiently as a municipality, but um, the DA really is the former Nationalist Party. They've joined the DA. So we've got a situation where we've got to ask ourselves, why do people find this a home? Why does someone who was involved in the Trojan horse atrocity where they trapped people and shot them during, in about 1985, one of those people involved in that is a D, was a DA councillor, may still be, I don't know. So I think one of my first question mark about the DA is really, what is their level of commitment to non-racialism? And what is wrong with their foreign policy? Tony Leon refers to their being wise to develop an alternative foreign policy. Well, you know, I think it is correct. They must have an alternative foreign policy, but needs to be very carefully considered. Now, I don't agree with the ANC attack on Nsimanga for going to Taiwan. Personally, I believe in one China policy, and that's correct not to recognize Taiwan. And I was involved, in fact, in uh, Parliament at the time in uh, visits to Taiwan and to People's Republic of China, uh, which, where we did argue for one China. But that doesn't mean that he was in violation of anything by going to Taiwan. There is no bar on uh, municipality to municipality uh, meetings and seeking investment, all of those sorts of things. What I do have a problem with is the visit to Israel by um, Musi Maimani doesn't seem to have thought this out carefully. He does it about a week after the United States, for almost the first time, did not use its veto in the Security Council of the United Nations, and they brought um, a resolution uh, declaring the illegality of the Israeli settlements in uh, which they've been building. And I think it's correct that there's a level of outrage about this. Palestine, the Palestinian question may be controversial in South Africa and in the world, but the DA ought to understand that a lot of people in this country identify with the Palestinian question and see it as being very similar to what was experienced under apartheid. And they also have seen uh, video footage, or TV footage of Israeli attacks on African migrants 
into Israel. So it's something which you would expect the DA leader to operate more cautiously on, and I don't think they have. Thank you, Professor. Thanks. That was Professor Raymond Sattner speaking to Krimo Media's policy about whether the DA is ready to govern.